Welcome back. It's good to see you. This is episode two of our Learn GeoGuessr series. In this series, we'll be building off of the previous knowledge that we learned in previous videos. So right here to my, I think it's, yeah, I think it's somewhere in the right corner. Uh, you will find the first episode, which is countries to never click in GeoGuess. If you came from that video, thank you so much for watching. That video unexpectedly blew up. Didn't expect anybody to watch that. But if you did, thank you so much. And we are going to continue growing and learning together here in the world of GeoGuessr. So without further ado, this video is all about the basic essentials, the essential tips, tricks, and hints that you need to know in order to be good at GeoGuessr. If you're an advanced player, you probably already know everything in this video, but there will be timestamps so you can skip around, go check out some stuff that you may need some refreshers on or go back to stuff, you know, do whatever you need to do. But we are going to learn and we're going to get started right now. I would argue that the number one clue on any GeoGuessr round is not going to be this sign for Oreos. It is going to be road lines. Because GeoGuessr takes place with Google Street View, of course, almost every single round, unless it's like a very rural out in the middle of nowhere round, will have street lines. So knowing your street lines is very essential. For the most part, every country has their distinct lines. There are obviously going to be exceptions where countries will throw in something that you normally won't see. But for example, in the United States, in Canada, in a lot of North and South America, you will see yellow lines in the center. And you generally don't see this very much in other parts of the world. You will see it, but it's honestly very rare. A good example of why this is important is especially if you're playing like no moving, panning or zooming. If you just look at this, it's kind of hard to tell where you are. But knowing the double yellow lines are very common in the US and Canada might be able to influence your decision. Now, obviously, if you turn around and see this major flag, then you'll know the answer. But if you don't see a flag and the road lines are the only clue that you have, which oftentimes they are because you're on a road and there's no signs, you know, the backs of the signs are visible, but you can't see where you are. The road lines are very crucial. So let's go over just a couple of examples. I can't go through all of them in this video, but I'll try to get through all the essential ones I think you really should know. And this double yellow line really is just essential. Now, as an American myself, you can make fun of me for that. It's fine. These two yellow lines are kind of a home to me, but they're not really found anywhere else in the world besides in the Americas. Let's give a couple of exceptions here. So here I am in Thailand. As you can see, there is a yellow double yellow line here. It's just dashed on the right side right now with white on the outsides. It looks exactly almost like the US. Um, so keep that in mind. You're not always going to be in the US or Canada or in South America when you do see double yellows. They do have them elsewhere. And just like in Thailand, if you see this, you're not automatically in Thailand. They do have other types of roads as well. But it is good to learn exactly what country has what road lines. Here's a really essential one that you should probably know. Now, this is not every single road in these countries, but it's pretty standard that in Sweden, you have smaller dashed lines here on the outsides of the road. Um, as you can see, this is a pretty rural road and you may not see these like in the city, but on any sort of, you know, forest uh, round, you probably are going to see these small dashed lines. In comparison, on the right side of here is Norway. Norway has longer dashed lines on the outside that are the same color. So if you can kind of look at the length here and see that, uh, the Norway is much longer and you're debating, is this Norway? Is this Sweden? Can't really tell. This is kind of a, a, a telltale sign that you might be in one or the other. Now, as I say, it's not going to be every road looking like this. You might even have some yellow line roads in, in Norway or something like that. But it, this is the standard. It's the most common that you'll see. Also, Estonia uses these smaller dashed lines. So uh, if you see smaller dashed lines, don't automatically go Sweden because it may be Estonia. It's a little bit less common to see it in Estonia, but it, it's here. As you can see, we are in Estonia and we do see the small dashed lines on the outside that are white. I'm also currently in France here. We do have some pretty long dashed lines in France. Let me know in the comments if there are any other countries that use these dashed lines on the side, especially in Europe, uh, so we don't get them confused and we can learn together as a community. But, you know, Sweden, Norway, Estonia, France are kind of the common ones that come to mind. But I mean, there, there, there certainly has to be other times when you'll see them in other countries as well. Orleans are also extremely important for Australia versus South Africa. In Australia, you'll see a lot of white lines. In fact, I think you'll rarely honestly see yellow lines in Australia. Uh, but in South Africa, it's quite the opposite. You'll see a lot of yellow lines on the outside and white in the middle. So a lot of times South Africa and Australia can be quite confusing to kind of differentiate. But if you're on a road that has yellow on the right, or left, then it's probably going to be South Africa versus Australia. The road lines, very important. 
those are all the ones I'm going to go over in this video, but there's so many more. Obviously, there are so many countries in the world that have different road lines. It's definitely good to learn. Uh, I can go into a more detailed video on road lines if you guys want. Just let me know in the comments below. But we're going to move on to the second essential thing, and that's going to be road signs. Road signs can often tell you almost exactly where you are. A lot of times you won't see them, but knowing the kinds of signs that you do see in a particular country will certainly help you. So here we are on a pretty random road in the middle of nowhere. It's hard to kind of know where you are. Now, obviously, we won't see BR262 in the actual GeoGuessr game. So if you don't see this, how are you going to figure out it's Brazil? Well, a lot of people will notice this sign right here and notice how it's black on the back. In Brazil, almost, I wouldn't say every sign, but it's very common that signs have black on the back. And it's, uh, it's pretty easy to know because not many other places do this in the world, especially in South America. So um that's a pretty important tip now if you watch people like rainbow or other pros they'll mention the colombian cross which is basically this thing on the back of signs it looks like a cross not many other places have it but for some reason colombia loves these things you'll see these a lot on different signs on the back the back of signs who would have thought would be such a good meta uh tip but truly it's i mean where else are you gonna go here this is a hard round um, you know, it couldn't really be anywhere in South America, but we see this Colombian cross here. You're going Colombia, right? So now here we are in this beautiful countryside, and this could be a lot of different countries right off the bat. It's kind of hard to, to uh, tell where you are based on the landscape itself. Oftentimes I confuse places like Spain and Turkey together because they look kind of similar. Even Greece, though, in Greece there too, they kind of look similar. But chevrons, another type of sign that basically comes into play when we're turning and kind of tells you that the road's curving are sometimes different colored and different countries use different color chevrons. So this is what they use in Spain. And here we are in Turkey, for example, which uses red and white. So you can kind of tell the difference. If you see this red and white going to be in Turkey, if you see blue and white, probably going to be in Spain. And there are, of course, other countries that use these colors as well. But this is kind of uh, a way to differentiate, you know, places that kind of look similar is through signs because we are always going to be on a road and there are always going to be road signs for the most part, for the most part. They're not as common as, of course, road lines, but they're there. Another essential sign that I think you guys should really all learn is these arrows that are pointing directly down at the road. Now, you may already know this, but this only exists on the island of Hokkaido in Japan. OK, so with this pole, I think it's because of there's a lot of snow in this region. So the snow plows or something don't hit the curb. I, I'm not exactly sure, but you'll see this fairly frequently in Hokkaido. As you can see, another one over here, another one down there. Uh, they're all over the place. So let's go back to the map real quick and I'll show you kind of, um, yeah, this entire island here has them. So uh, I'm not sure if they're anywhere else in Japan, but I, I'm fairly confident that they're all over this island. And if you see that, you know you're, you know you're here. Now this next tip may be quite obvious, but it's important to understand which countries drive on which side of the road, right? So this is kind of an interesting round here. And the way that signs can help you determine what side of the road you're on is what side of the road the sign is. So as you can see, this sign over here is on the left side of the road. So it will basically be telling you that people are driving on the left side. You spin around and there's a sheep sign here. So we're probably going to be in like Wales or something uh, or, or Ireland. And it's on the left side of the road. So that will tell you that we're probably driving on the left. Also, it just says slow facing this way on the left side of the road. But pretend that's not there just these signs are and that's really critical especially if you're debating between let's say the uk and france which oftentimes is a debate what you're having uh, that will help you determine where you are now honestly there aren't many places that do drive on the left i don't think that there are any in north or south america bermuda does drive on the left and there might be a couple of other caribbean islands that come to mind but honestly i, I don't i don't know i'll uh, leave, leave, leave a comment if there are any that i miss here um, the United Kingdom and Ireland, of course, drive on the left as well as Malta. And I believe that's it for Europe. Um, in Africa, South Africa, Zutu, Eswatini, and Botswana are all on the left. Um, and so are Kenya and Uganda. Is Rwanda? I, let me check real quick. So interestingly enough, Rwanda actually drives on the right, which is super surprising to me because it's right next to Uganda and Kenya that drive on the left. So if you're debating, you know, if, if it's Kigali or, you know, Kampala, you know, the side of the road that you're driving on is certainly gonna help. All these countries over here drive on the right, Nigeria, Ghana, and Senegal. So keep that in mind for Africa. 
Now, Southeast Asia is absolutely huge to understand which countries drive on which side of the road because it's basically split. Uh, you'll see that Bangladesh, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore all drive on the left, and also Indonesia all drive on the left, which is super important to know because Cambodia, Laos, and the Philippines drive on the right. So these three drive on the right over here. The rest kind of drive on the left. Taiwan, Taiwan actually drives on the right as well. Um, whereas Japan drives on the left and South Korea on the right. So, so that was a bit confusing, I know. Let me list the countries that drive on the left. Bangladesh, Bhutan, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, and also India does drive on the left as well. It seems like any country that England had an impact on drives on the left. When you come down here, Australia and New Zealand also drive on the left. So just keep that in mind. Um, that's why, again, it's kind of hard to differentiate Australia with South Africa because they also both drive on the left, but that's okay. Hong Kong and neighboring Macau, if that's how you pronounce it. I apologize if I got any mispronunciation wrong. I did on my last video and I got absolutely butchered for it. I apologize. I'm trying, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get better. But Hong Kong and China in general drives on the left, which is super useful when trying to compare yourself to Taiwan or Hong Kong. Maybe you don't know which one's which. You're trying to figure it out. Taiwan drives on the right, just like South Korea. So between Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan, Japan's the only one that drives on the left. So if you're trying to narrow down which one you're in, uh, that's a pretty easy way to do it is uh, if you drive on the left, you're going to be in Japan. So I think I got everything in the world. If I missed anything, please leave a comment. If there's some random place that drives on the other side of the road that I said, please let me know. But that's a pretty good tutorial on roads. So now let's move on to something a bit more interesting. I lied, there's nothing more interesting than roads, but it is kind of important to understand languages. Now, obviously you don't have to speak the language, but you have to be able to recognize which language is which. For example, the difference between Italian here, French, and Spanish, of course. As I say, because we are on Google Street View, a lot of the times we'll be able to see signs that have language, and it's gonna be kind of critical um, if there are no other clues, and if you see language, it can really help you narrow down where you are. Sometimes you may be on the wrong continent and you see a, a, a Spanish sign, and you're like, oh, I thought I was in Indonesia. I'm actually in Colombia or something, you know? So yeah, language can really help you out if you're in a bit of a pinch. Uh, here are some crucial, and I, I, don't, you know, I don't know if it's crucial or not, but for some very common phrases or words that you'll see in particular languages that are kind of a dead giveaway to what language that you're speaking. Reading, sorry, reading. Portuguese versus Spanish. This is an essential, essential difference that you'll need to learn because of Brazil. And also Spain and Portugal, of course. Uh, you know, if you see Portuguese, you know you're not going to be in Spain, and you know you're not going to be in any other South American country except for Brazil. This is the CAO is almost, you know, a classic Portuguese ending to a word. And if you see this C with the accent underneath, this is actually not even in Spanish at all. Um, so if you see the C with the accent underneath, you're definitely going to be speaking Portuguese. You're going to be in either Brazil or Portugal, you know, most likely, most likely. Right now we're in Brazil. Another really useful hint is Finland. Now, Finland is no offense if you live here, but has one of the craziest languages I've ever seen. Some of these words are so long with so many random letters. It's it's, it's crazy, but it is very nice that they do this. T-I-E at the end of their road signs. Uh, I'm not sure what this means, but it's almost a telltale sign that you're going to be in Finland. So beautiful. T-I-E, probably going to be in Finland. If you guys know of any other kind of signs like this so that you're in a country, if you see this particular word, put it down in the comments. Uh, you know, we're all trying to learn here. We're all trying to get better and it could be very useful to us. Now, luckily for all of you, the most useful language to know in GeoGuessr is actually just going to be English. There is so much English in the world. It's unbelievable. Many of the European countries, even that don't speak English as their native language, will have some English there. Obviously, you know, Australia, New Zealand, English, uh, United States, Canada, uh, United Kingdom, Ireland, you know, so, some of these places, I, you know, they just all have English, which is just beautiful. And a lot of places in Africa as well. So if you're watching this video, I assume you already know English since how else would you understand me? 
So nice, you're already uh, a step above. The next tip that I think is, is useful to learn is flags. Flags of the countries of the world. Um, and obviously you don't have to memorize every flag, just the ones that are in GeoGuessr, of course. But if you do see a flag, like here we're in Indonesia, we have an Indonesian flag. It's almost 100% guarantee that you're gonna be in that country. It's very rare that you see a flag flying for another country you know, in, in, in that country. So, uh, for example, you probably won't see an Indonesia flag flying in Malaysia. So, uh, you know, normally I would say there are some exceptions. The only ones I can really think of are like at embassies. So just make sure you're not at an embassy. And then I really think that you can rely heavily on flags. The only problem with flags are they're kind of rare. They're, they're, they're certainly not the, the type of hint that you're going to find on every single round. Flags are, however, super helpful in determining particular countries. For example, United States versus Canada. A lot of the times in the U.S., you'll see flags. I mean, the U.S. we here are very patriotic. Here's a U.S. flag right here. I just, I basically just plopped down this my little guy here on a random road, and we already found a, a flag. So, it's very common in particular countries. Some, you know, countries have no flags flying, and it's just kind of, you know, there are certainly more flags that are useful than others. But as I say, if you do see a flag, it's almost 100% sure that you're going to be able to get the country right. Not to mention in Battle Royale countries, the country flag is what pops up up here. So it's very essential to learn your flags for this very reason. Hey, not too bad, not too bad. The final and last tip we're going to be talking about today is car meta. Now, if you're a Geo Wizard fan, you know he doesn't use the car meta and all people try not to use the car meta because i don't know it, it kind of gives away a lot of countries instantly and there's not really much work that needs to be done but we're going to be going over roof racks here camera generations camera generations massive rifts in the sky snorkels and the color of the google car itself but that will have to wait Till next video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, any comments, anything to add about this video, let me know in the comments. And I know this was a very brief overview with a couple of uh, hints here or there. If you would like me to go into detail on a particular thing we talked about today, let me know as well. I'm very open to all of your suggestions here today. And I hope to see you all in episode three of this Learn GeoGuessr series. Ah, that was probably my most insane guess I've ever had in my life. He's jumping. He made it. Oh, he falls. What is he doing? Wait. Let's go. No. 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 No.